Welcome to Live Recession Proof Now, where we teach Christians how to glorify God through industry and enterprise. Using biblical principles, the Isaacs Marketing Group team shows you how to change your life by changing your finances. Are you ready, really ready, to increase your income, eliminate your debts, have more than enough, live wisely with freedom and generosity? If you are, then here's Sean, Deborah, Troy, and Adrian, along with special guests, to show you how to live recession-proof now. Welcome to Live Recession Proof Now. My name is Sean Isaacs. Welcome to another weekly broadcast. If you are new to the Live Recession Proof Now broadcast, we are also podcasting through all the podcasting platforms. You can learn more about Live Recession Proof Now by going to Live Recession Proof Now. Here at Live Recession Proof Now, we teach God's people how to glorify Him through industry and enterprise or change your life. By changing your finances. And so if you're new to the whole Live Recession Proof Now idea, maybe you're not aware of how much the Bible talks about money and the need to be a good steward and a manager of the money that God provides us and how much uh, this is a critical and very important subject to the Lord. And so I want to take a quick moment to introduce my team. Those of you that are joining me on Facebook Live, to my left is my wife, Deborah. Hello, everybody. And Deborah is known as Miss Political, right? And she tends to bring a political uh, spin on everything that we discuss. Uh, you happen to believe that the Bible is not only a spiritual book, but also a very political book, right? Yes, I do. Why do you make that case? Christ talks about the kingdom, and he is the Prince of Peace, he's the ruler. He has come to set up a kingdom here on earth and in heaven. Right. So Jesus came as a king of kings Correct. and the Lord of lords. Correct. And in that sense, he's an authority over his world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the old Christmas writers or hymn writers had, had an understanding of that. We've always said, Troy, right, that they sing songs like uh, or wrote songs like Hark the Herald, Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn, not the baby in the manger, but the newborn king. Right. right? Yes. Joy to the world, the Lord has come and you'll see this theme throughout and not only that he said that we're going to rule and so the 12 disciples are going to also rule they're going to sit at his right hand right so, 12 apostles right right yeah right, right. sit on thrones judging the nation. Right. so good That's right good. so deborah is known as miss political i'm known as mr pioneer and typically uh my gifts the way the lord has gifted me um, I believe that uh, from a marketing standpoint, there are two major ways to grow anything when it comes to business, marketing, sales, and that's either uh, tactics or strategies. I believe 90% of success comes from strategy. 10% is tactics. And tactics to me would be whether you use Facebook ads, a radio ad campaign, billboards, direct mail, email campaigns, all of those are tactics. What you do with those mediums or the platforms has everything to do with the strategy. And for years I've been an entrepreneur. God has blessed me with wisdom and the gifts to know how to start things, how to grow them. And so I'm known as the pioneer. Next to my wife is uh, my twin brother Troy. And Troy is known as the preacher. Troy, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I'm blessed, highly favored. Uh, I'm, I praise the Lord for another opportunity to, again, get into God's Word. I believe the Bible says God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, and I believe the Bible has the answer for everything. Uh, someone says the Bible is your basic instructions before leaving earth, and I believe it's that, and it also has everything you need for all decision-making and any challenges or anything you need to do. I believe the Bible has the answer uh, already in there, and so my goal will seek to not just share with you scriptures, but help you to make it practical and show you how you can actually find other relevant texts in the Bible to deal with things you may discuss. Now, when you say you, my goal is to share with you, you're referring <coughs> to the, those who are listening, and yeah, obviously watching. those yeah. who yeah, are those, live. Those who yeah. are watching on Facebook, and, and those who will be listening on the radio station. Okay, all right, awesome. And to your left is your lovely bride, Adrian, who's known as Miss Practical. Adrian, how are you tonight? 
I'm doing well. I'm uh, happy to be doing another Facebook Live. I see a couple of our friends are on. Hey, Bill. How's it going? Bill. <laughs> Bill. Yeah, Bill DeGroat. Oh, Bill. Uh, how, you doing? how you doing, Bill? It's good to uh, good to see you. I, I can't see the comments, so you're right. going to monitor comments and, and kind of keep us abreast of what people are saying. So I want to say tonight that uh, what we do at Live Recession Proof Now is we teach God's people, as I said earlier, how to glorify Him, how to make Him famous, how to put Him on display using the medium of industry and enterprise. And we believe at, at Live Recession Proof Now that we are headed for probably uh, one of the worst recessions in our generation. Today, the Dow dropped by over 700 points earlier this afternoon. I don't know what, what it ended at, and I don't know if the, numbers went, if the numbers changed, but I don't know, Troy, how many Christians, especially in the West and in America, are actually prepared for another recession. Uh, because right now things look pretty good, right? Uh, that is correct. And especially if you uh, just listen to what President Trump is saying and others are saying, you'll think, you know, we've, we've gained a whole lot of jobs. But, but I think it's, it's really the calm before the storm. And I think we as God's people need to position ourselves. Like I always say, you know, Joseph uh, had God's mind. Daniel, many other saints in the Word of God, they had God's mind. And so they were aware and, you know, the Bible says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but He reveals secrets unto His servants, the prophets. And so I would encourage any, any child of God to stay in your words, stay on your knees, and continue to tune into shows like these that will seek to kind of make you aware of what's going on in the news, but also applying it to the Word. Uh, because I believe many, unfortunately, are asleep in, in this hour because things look good. Praise the Lord. I want the president to succeed. I want the president to do well. I want the country to continue to prosper. And uh, I'm hoping that my thoughts about a recession on the horizon is that it's years from now, that it's not in 2018 or 2019 or 2020. But what we're saying is that you should, you and I need to be prudent. We need to be wise and we need to be those who are prepared. And if we are prepared during the time of a recession, we've seen this happen through 2008, 9, 10, 11, that when God's people are properly positioned, that we have an opportunity to be a greater light to those who are in the world uh, who are struggling in Correct. these matters, in these areas. Two reasons why the Dow dropped um, 700 points. Okay. The first one is the Congress just, I think the House and, and the Senate passed an omnibus bill, which includes... $1.5 trillion, I believe, in spending. More okay. spending adding to the debt. We already, Ob President Obama's administration already gave us $15 trillion in debt. Now the Republican Congress is adding more debt and more spending on a whole bunch of things. And I heard someone say today that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, who are the leaders of both houses, they're doing backflips because they are overjoyed because they like spending money. They like to spend our right, money. Especially when it's so, someone else's, right? So, so they pass that. So nobody's cutting the deficit. Nobody is worried about the budget. It's going to bust the budget wide open. So the stock market is reacting to that. They're getting a little bit nervous because our debt is increasing. Secondly, President Trump himself has been saying he wants to start taxing Chinese imports. And they are reacting big time to that. Right. And he wants to put tariffs on steel and all kinds of stuff. And he may be causing a trade war. So now the stock market is getting skittish. People are getting nervous. It's, it's coming. And I don't know if Donald Trump understands what he's doing. Another reason is he fired his economic advisor in chief because Cohen who was the guy before resigned in frustration because Trump's not listening to him right. he didn't agree with the tariffs <laughs> Trump wants tariffs and taxes I don't understand it it's just everything is going chaotic That's so, you, so. so you mean he's not making America great <sighs> I'm messing with you only, and listen the only, the only person can make America great is Christ Amen. You need an awakening. Yeah, That's yeah. the only way America will be America great. America will not be great until there's a revival. You need to read, uh, <laughs> and learn about George Whitfield and right. many of the other saints and when America is, really was great. So let me just give a message <laughs> to the church community because the, the body of Christ is very divided. 
right now politically. And we forget that there is only one king who is the king of kings. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for uh, the, the president and we're to honor him, respect him, we're to pray for him. God commands us in First Peter 2 that we're to pray for people in authority so that we can live a peaceable life. God doesn't get more glory out of us being more persecuted and hurt and harm and running from city to city, right? He said we should pray that we would live a peaceable and calm life. Now, there are some of God's people that think God gets greater glory out of us going through greater tribulation and trial. But God can use those things. But I want to start with what God commands us to pray for. And so we rejoice in the successes of whatever government is in place. But we want to remind the church community that the scriptures make it very clear that there is always peace. There's calm before the storm. Right. And uh, what we're trying to do at Live Recession Proof now is to teach the body of Christ to take advantage of the prosperity that's now available to the, to the body of Christ or to the church or the world living in a land of opportunity, take advantage of those opportunities, seize them to set yourself up so that you are uh, able to be able to, you know, through famine and through great financial difficulty, which we believe is coming, uh, and hopefully not in my generation, but I believe it is coming in this generation, uh, that we're more prepared uh, to be able to uh, to be able to stand, and the, the principles are, are there. Not only should we prepare ourselves spiritually by putting on the armor of God, uh, we should be like the ant who is preparing. We focus on four major areas that we think the Bible makes a priority for the child of God. Number one, we should live on less than we make. Live on less than you make. It takes great discipline to do that. It takes temperance. It takes uh, wisdom. It takes prudence. To live on less than you make. It takes denying ourselves to be able to live on less than we make. Secondly, we teach that we as God's people should responsibly pay off our debts. Again, that's prudent. That's wise. You don't wait until a recession comes to lose your house, lose your car, lose other things. Thirdly, we teach people how to produce multiple streams of income. Uh, This is something that was developed uh, that the Lord laid on my heart back in 2008-2009. I saw... Churches where pastors had to go back to work. Tithe and the offerings were, were, were not enough to be able to keep a pastor on staff full time. Uh, I saw situations where many of God's people were stressed out, literally, because they had lost their job during the recession. You know, a lot of businesses closed. Linens and things closed. Circuit City closed. Lots of businesses closed during the recession time. And uh, what we're saying is we believe another recession is on its way. And God's people need to be a little bit better prepared. We need to be like the ant of Proverbs 6, which has no overseer, no guide, no ruler. But the ant knows how to take advantage of the harvest time, how to prepare during the harvest for those uh, challenging times and how to lay up for a, uh, we're going to call it a rainy day. Many of you have friends, people in your life that will never listen to you share the gospel with them. But being an expert at what you do, being successful financially in business or as a professional entrepreneur, uh, any of those type areas can open doors in many ways that you probably are not aware. We've seen by experience where people who may be close to the gospel of Jesus Christ initially, they wouldn't come to our churches. They're not interested in reading the Bible, but they need help on how to grow their business, how to attract more customers. Right. And we're able to show them that the scriptures have answers for everything that pertains to life and godliness. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to get into two of the 7.7, what I'm calling or we're calling 7.7 biblical keys to grow your business in the next 30 days. And um, on the surface, 30 days may sound really um, too optimistic and unreasonable or uh, unrealistic, but... um, As you learn these principles of Scripture, you'll be able to see the kind of growth. And the principles are not limited to business. Uh, They can be transferred to other areas of our life because that's the Bible. The Bible is not limited to any one area. It transcends every area, every industry, every culture, every race, every political bent or persuasion or conviction. That's just what the Scriptures do. So uh, last time we were together, we talked about point number one right in the 7.7 biblical keys. And we said that point number one is God expects you to be rewarded 
or compensated by your clients and customers for services or products that you provide. And the reason we got into that and we treated that as point number one is because many of God's people struggle with pricing, struggle with charging people for things. You know, I spoke to a lady today who wants to do a Mother's Day event. The venue, the place that she is doing this event is charging her $48 per plate, right, to put on this event for Mother's Day. And she wants to charge $55. Wow. And I said, number one, you're not going to make any money. Correct. Secondly, she's looking to advertise she's on radio. Lose money, actually. Right? The place seats about 200 people. So even if she sold out every seat, she would make $1,400 at $55 a ticket. She has no money to advertise. She has no money to be able to promote the event. And I see this happening over and over again. And to me, it's a marketing problem. Right? But it's also a mindset because when you flow from a place of limiting beliefs, I'm going to call it a limiting belief, mm-hmm. I said what you should do is you should research people that are putting on Mother's Day events throughout the nation. Don't just look at New Jersey and New York. Look at the nation and get comparative information and figure out you know, a price that makes sense. But I said $55 doesn't make sense. I said, what you need to do first is you probably need to find a different venue. $48 per ticket where I'm taking my mother, right, to a a venue for a Mother's Day brunch. And then I have to take, typically, if if I'm going to take my wife to a Mother's Day brunch, we're taking our five children. So we're looking at seven tickets at $55. That for a lot of people is steep, right? You're looking at close to 400 bucks. Uh, that for a lot of people may be, for some people, Just that, that may be a lot right, for one right. day. And so, again, all of these are issues. But part of the issue for her is she, she was struggling with charging more. I said, maybe you need to change who you're targeting. I was going to say that. You know, right. who you're targeting, you need to target. Say, yeah. yeah. I Go mean, ahead. if you target in a rich neighborhood or a wealthy neighborhood, fifty-five do- or I mean, $4,800 $100 is like It's not a lot, yeah. Right. If you're going to do it in like Newark or in um, Newark, New Jersey, or, or, or for those of you or, that are listening in Georgia, right? right. Or you know, um, Livingston, of course, you right? Not, but right. That's that. exactly what Sean was saying. That's a marketing problem. You right. don't know your target right. audience. If right. you don't know your target audience, then you don't then you're know just... what price point you're going for. If it's a high end customer or somebody more middle weight, like. That, exactly, it's a marketing issue. If you don't have any idea what your target is, then how are you going to hit the target? Well, and, and that's so important, and this is why we say marketing is everything, because marketing would also cause you to make a better decision on where you have your event. Right. Right, because if you only have so much money budgeted for marketing purposes, and if you understand, like we at IMG, that marketing is everything you do to tell people who you are, what you do, and why they can trust you, then you understand even me picking out a venue of where I'm going to hold my event is also a marketing tactic because, I mean, if I'm having an event in Manhattan or Brooklyn, it could also determine how many customers I get. Correct. So, again, this is something that people don't understand, and I'm going to say it again. Marketing is everything you do. It's not just advertising. It's not just billboards. It's not just ads and different things and yellow pages. Uh, it's everything you're doing, and you can do marketing bad or good. And uh, if this person had only known, you know, the, the first step in marketing is having a great, unique selling proposition. What, what, what is my goal? What, what is my message that I'm trying to convey to the people that uh, I'm inviting to this Mother's Day thing? Most people don't do that. And, you know, there's an old saying, he who fails to plan, plans to fail. You just have an idea. Oh, I have an idea. Maybe the Lord gave me this vision. Go and have a Mother's Day thing. But I don't know exactly what I want to do with this Mother's Day thing. And some people may say, well, eh, you're reading too much into it. Well, you know, But all of that will impact what what you do with your resources. The thing that I think she she missed. And again, I see this, this challenge is everywhere. I think one of the weaknesses that we as God's people have uh, in America, we we tend to go to one, to one of two extremes when it comes to the Bible, because... A lot of times, God's people don't think of Scripture in relation to money, in relation to entrepreneurship, business, and so on. Mm-hmm. The Scripture says, in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. If I believe God has given me a vision to, start a, to, to do a Mother's Day brunch, 
I said to her, I said, have you ever put on an event like this before? She said, no. Well, Scripture says in a multitude of counsel, there's safety, there's protection. Mm -hmm. Just because you believe you have a great idea doesn't mean it is a great idea. Secondly, because you have a great idea doesn't mean you know how to execute it or how to create results. And so counsel, I said to her, I said, you should go online because Google is a great resource. You can become an expert on anything, and I don't say that lightly. If you really want to, by spending enough hours learning, researching, gathering information, and most of this can be done for free. Correct. I said you should research online, and uh, it's just unfortunate. But the bigger picture, uh, going back to our first point, and those of you that missed it, go to the Live Recession Proof Now Facebook page, <laughs> and I believe you can find the video yeah, there. Um, we dealt with the first point. If you're struggling with pricing your products and services, you know you should be charging more, but you're afraid to charge more because you think if you charge more, you'll get less customers. Or even worse, you think, you're, you think it's virtuous or you are doing ministry by giving your products and services away. What we want to say is that does not honor God more. You need to determine, am I doing, a minis- am I doing ministry or am I doing business? Right. Right, because it takes money to do ministry, and it takes it takes uh, wisdom to build the business. Right, and many of God's people, unfortunately, we don't understand that money is spiritual. Money right. has the value that that we give it based on our experiences, our knowledge, and so on. So, those of you that are on Facebook Live, this is a good time. If you are in business, looking to start a business, you That's are really an entrepreneur, important. a sales professional. You are trying to figure out how to generate leads, how to how to increase revenue in your life. Maybe you understand the need for passive income, residual income, and you're not sure how to do that. This is a good time to ask a question, and we'll seek to answer it. For those of you that are on Facebook Live, we are taking a break for the radio broadcast, but we're going to come right back and deal with uh, secret number two. Life can be difficult at times, and we may go through ups and downs or experience financial hardship. Maybe you had a loan modification, a short sale, or even filed for bankruptcy. Hey everyone, this is Mike. And this is Brian of Fellowship Home Loans. You could be in a modified mortgage and not even realize that the rate is adjustable. Maybe it contains a balloon payment, or maybe you're not even paying any principal. A modification is a short-term fix. Call us today to get your mortgage evaluated and receive the truth about what you can qualify for. 800-804-SAVE. That's 800 800- 804-7283 or online at fellowshiphomeloans.com. All listeners receive two-month break in mortgage payments and $1,000 back at closing. Mortgage lending guided by Christian principles. Come and get your loan, Fellowship Home Loans. Intercontinental Capital Group, DBA, Fellowship Home Loans, Equal Housing Opportunity Lender, NMLS number 60134. Let's jump right into to biblical secret number two to growing your business in the next 30 days. Secret number two is self-promotion is bad for business and will not create word of mouth. Most people in marketing and sales with limited experience know that the best advertising is what? What have you guys heard? Word of mouth. mouth. Right. Right. The best type of advertising, the most successful, uh, the most uh, effective, I would say, is word of mouth. Uh, And so the Bible tells us in Proverbs 27 verse 2, It says, let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. I want to, let's talk about that, and uh, why it's best and better to let another person praise you, and not you yourself, when God says it, but how, practically, how does this affect business? What are some thoughts that come to mind for you guys? You know what word jumped out at me when I was reading this? A stranger. Every word is essential and every word is purposeful like the lord doesn't just put words for no good reason right nothing is filling exactly nothing is filling so the fact that it's a stranger and not a friend or not you know family member not like any other person like a stranger let a stranger be the one to praise you like that really stood out to me why is that because i think that that gives validation Correct. For what the person is saying. If it's coming from a friend or a family member, then it's like, oh, well, you know, you're just saying that because because you like them or because you have to because right. you're related to them. But if it's a stranger that's saying it's like, oh, well, you know, it makes other people take notice because then it's not just some personal relationship or some partiality or some feeling right. behind it. But there's something valid 
that's making this person say, hey, check out this other guy over there, check out that service or whatever it is, because there's some value there and it right. gives value to the person. Right. I, go ahead, Deborah. Um, I think of our conversation earlier today where I told you um, one rule in good writing is show, don't tell. Right. So, in other words, if you want to convey to the reader that someone is tired, it's better to not just say, so, uh, he was tired. No. After working nine to five a hard day's work, he comes home, he plops himself on the couch, puts up his leg, and closes his eyes because he wants to take a few minutes of breathing. Right. Right. (laughs) Right. So you're showing them that he's tired. You're giving them a visual. Right. So you don't tell them he's tired. You're showing the reader that he's tired by the description. And it's the same principle here. You know, a lot of the times what? in advertising, in advertising? Sorry. okay. Yeah. We give exceptional service. And We've been in business for 50 years. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who cares? You've got to try and find ways to show <laughs> right. and not just tell. So I think I think a lot of people miss this, and I'm glad you guys brought it out because I've seen this for, for at least 20 plus years, <laughs> right, throughout the New York market, which is one of the most... Uh, busiest markets in the world. As far as markets that produce revenue, it's one of the most successful markets in the world. Yet you would be surprised and shocked by the reality uh, of how many business owners don't understand this basic principle. How many marketing directors don't understand this basic principle. And what is the basic principle? Let another man praise you and not you yourself. How many times have you heard an ad uh, or how many times have you seen a post on Facebook or other social media where people are telling people how great they are, telling people how great their business is. And you said it, I think, Troy, you said no one cares that you've been in in business for 100 years or 1,000 years. People say, you know, we're family owned. Who cares that you're family owned? I always say that no one cares about this information until they have a relationship with you. Like the fact that you are family owned is not going to make me come in. What value is that? That's not going to make me patronize your restaurant. Right? The fact that you're Christian is not going to make me buy your products or services. Are you saying that being Christian is the only reason why I should buy your product or your service? Something's definitely wrong there. There should be something that you're providing in value and benefit to me as the consumer that speaks volumes. And this, I think, is a a weakness in the understanding of many of, of God's people. But in the general marketplace... When it comes to to marketing, and I just want to say this, this is one of the reasons why reviews are so big. And if you are in business, one of the best things you could do is incentivize your customers to write reviews. Like we said last week, I said that you should not give away your products and services. Don't give away your products and services for free. That which costs nothing is worth nothing. But by stating that, it doesn't mean you always need to have money exchanged for your product or service. You can have a video testimonial done for your product or service. You can have a written testimonial done, an audio testimonial done, a review done, right? Sometimes, out of the generosity of my own heart, you guys have seen this, I will do a brainstorming session with someone for free, right? There are other people that would pay hundreds of dollars for a brainstorming strategy session on how to grow their business. But why would I do it sometimes for someone else for free? If I did it for them for free, I said, I need you to write me a review on LinkedIn. Because to me, that review is worth more than the financial transaction in the moment. Right. right? But what we're saying is if you're going to make those decisions, they should be consciously and intentionally done. It shouldn't be out of guilt because you feel you want to give, you know, I should just, this person can't afford my product or service. So reviews are something you can begin to do immediately. And uh, I I don't buy, for example, I don't buy books from Amazon or anywhere else without reading reviews first. Right? Well, I do do the same thing with a movie. I'll never watch a movie unless I read the review and see, you know, and also read and what the content is going to be about. So that that's important. And if we understand also, this principle is in scripture. It's it's not just there, like we say, for fill in. I mean, even the Bible tells us that, that we are not sufficient of ourselves. We shouldn't speak about ourselves. Someone says humility is not thinking, thinking, less. Of, thinking less of yourself. Humility is 
not thinking of yourself at all. Right. And and you see the principle even in the Trinity, right? The Father glorifies the Son. He says, this is my beloved Son, hear Him. The Spirit glorifies the Son. He, you know, he, he never speaks of Himself. Right. And even Jesus, you know, when, when they said, will you uh, at this time restore the kingdom, they would ask Him questions. He said, the Father has placed that in His authority. Right. He would always point people back to His Father. So the, the principle goes the same all across the board. And, and if you understand that everyone is, we have a saying also, we say everyone is listening to what's in it for me. And that's why I said, who cares? I don't care if you're family owned. I don't care if you've been in business 50 years. I don't care if you've sold a million dollars worth of cars or whatever. I don't care. I want to know how whatever it is you're doing is going to benefit me. Correct. That's what everyone else is listening to. We say everybody's listening to WIIFM, what's in mm-hmm. it for me. Adrian, there was something you wanted to add there? Well, yeah. Well, I was just thinking of WIIFM myself, but it reminded me of another scripture that I wanted to bring in to uh, to talk about, which is uh, Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Yes. Um, and I think it's so interesting that we're doing this on a Facebook Live because this is where you most often see those... Um, self-promotion. Right, self-promotion, yeah. the humble brag, you know. Oh, look at what I was, oh, what I was able to do for this customer and, you know, all of those, right. look at my, you know, great product or whatever posts, which, you know, those are nice to see every once in a while, but it does become a bit of a drag when that's all that someone's doing is, oh, look at my new product, look right. at my new service, look right. at this. And it, it doesn't have any um, value for the customer. So anyway, let me get to... The verse. No, take your time. Go in ahead. case anyone is, you know, not thinking of it off the top of their head, Philippians two, three, and four. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Or some translations would have more significant or of more value than yourself. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but, but also the interest to the interests of others. Right. Which that's W I I F M. Right. The interests of others. What right. are the what value does it have to the customer? Not, you know, the selfish ambition or vain conceit. You know, I need to get this referral. I right. need to make this sale. I need, which, you know, maybe you do. Maybe right. you've got bills to pay. We all understand that. But right. it shouldn't be coming from that place. It should be coming from, you know, what's the need of the customer? What what goal are they trying to reach? What need do they have? And does your service meet that? Are you right. able to... Um, meet that need for the customer. Some some of the most successful and biggest brands in the world, Amazon, PayPal, Facebook, right, Google, if you read the, st- the stories of the owners, they didn't start out to make a lot of money. They didn't set out to be rich. They were committed to solve a problem. Some sure. of them, initially, Facebook was trying to solve a problem for college students, for themselves, right? Right. Uh, and, and similar stories, and and uh, I just want to say to 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 the Christian community, the church community, that you don't have to be a Christian to actually access and benefit from the principles of Scripture. You don't even have to know that they're principles of Scripture because they are they are laws that God has put in place. Just like the law of gravity, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Giving Correct. is not limited. To giving money, I think some people only think of it as money. Right. A lot of our prosperity churches only focus on Luke six and the text of Scripture: "Given it shall be given unto you." Right. But giving is not limited to monetary giving. It could be time. It could be education. It could be information. Whatsoever a man, woman, boy, girl sows, that's what we that will we also reap. So mm-hmm. our second secret: we're saying biblical secret. Right? To grow your business in the next 30 days. Number one, understand, believe, and know that God expects you to be rewarded for your services. It is a moral issue in Scripture for, to, to, for someone to work for you, for example, and you not pay them. It's a moral issue for you to work for someone else and them not pay you for the work done. And uh, there's Scriptures for that, and we went over those. Secondly, second secret is self-promotion is bad for business and will not create word of mouth. And we believe word of mouth is the best advertising. It is the easiest and quickest way to grow. And this is why the majority of people on YouTube, Facebook, social media, and other places are trying to make things go viral. They want people to spread the word. Because if I share with my center of influence, 
It's going to be far more effective than if right. you just paid for an ad to reach that center of influence, right? That's true. Absolutely. And Sean, um, I don't know if you were thinking of moving on to the next point. But, I was, but let's but, stay here. If you um, want what to I was stay. going to say is, I mean, we told people what not to do, but we need to give them a solution of how you resolve that because most people think, well, uh, how, what, what should I talk about then if, if I'm not talking about how long I've been in business and all of my success and all of that stuff? Right. And what I would say is you need to learn what your customers want and you need to give it to them. So, for example, you, you gave the analogy of Facebook. Facebook met a need. Facebook found a way for people to interact socially. Again, YouTube does the same thing. It's free. You know, you can record videos, which we're doing right now. Uh, Google allows you to search for things. They don't charge you for it, yet they're getting tons of money because many people are spending money for ads to, to place their ads there that we will see them. Right. And if you understand, one of the ways you can get people to like what you do is you give value first. You give without expecting anything in return. If you're going to give, give with wisdom, right? If you're going to give something away... Do it wisely. Do it prudently. Exercise discretion. Understand that you are a steward of the business, that you are a manager of the resources that God has provided. And so in a good conscience, you should be okay with not only charging, but if you are going to uh, be a blessing, let's put that in quotes, to somebody. And by doing that, you mean that you're going <clears> to <throat> give them your product or your service for free, then make sure that you get something in return. And by saying that, we're not contradicting the Bible or the words you just said, Troy, give expecting nothing in return. Uh, the, the idea has to do with the heart issue. You're not giving to receive. You're making that a uh, prerequisite in the sense of, I don't have the time. I remember um, one of my clients uh, uh, years ago, a couple years ago, was uh, one of the biggest law firms in New Jersey. And uh, uh, this man charges you know, over $500 an hour right, for his time. And he was sharing one time with a group of entrepreneurs and business owners how that the way he thinks about his services and his time is when he gives that away, he's taking away time from somewhere else. He's taking away time from his family and time from his children. And so the thing that, that really, as simple as that is, it actually convicted me. Because I thought about it, here I was thinking I'm doing such a great thing in helping all these business folks and entrepreneurs and Christians. I want to help them multiply and grow their businesses and so on. But I didn't factor in the time I was giving to them for free to help them, quote unquote, could have been time invested in my own family, my wife and my children. And so I've made a commitment that if I'm going to do anything for somebody in relation to growing their business, for example, or helping them start something new, or some entrepreneurship, or indus, indus, in, in, industrial say, thing. industrial industrious uh, endeavor, uh, that I am going to expect something in return in the sense of, uh, and the principle for me is this, where a person's treasure is, that's where their heart will be. I found from experience that when I gave people ideas, and I said, do this, do this, take th these certain actions, if it didn't cost them, for that information, they often didn't take action. Right. And so I found that when I said, well, you need to give me a written testimonial, you need to write this, or you need to take this action, that they had skin in the game. And when they had skin in the game, now they took more seriously the things that were suggested. So these are principles you can use if you're a business coach, if you're a consultant, a personal coach, life coach, any of these type of things. Uh, you have this, some of the same challenges and it's just the more you understand and learn what we're saying, the truth and the, the things from Scripture, we believe that the Bible is the best book on business and marketing that there is. Even though there are great books out there, we believe that the Bible has answers for all these things. So, so um, Adrian, we want to check. Real, we need to take another break. Yep. I was just about to say before we jump into the next because we we're ready to okay. jump into the next In the meantime, break. can you check and see if we have any questions or, or any feedback there? Anything we need to answer. And uh, before we go to the break, Troy or Deborah, do you guys have anything you want to say about in, in closing out this section? Um, the only thing I was going to say about self-promotion is I think that's a reason why people are so aversive or, or 
closed push back in terms of sales right because self promotion reeks of desperation right and people get a sense of that and so if you're going to promote your business or yourself or so forth you you don't want to come across as desperate right you definitely want to come across as somebody who is there to help someone and something that Troy said too was you know not don't don't approach it as something that you want, but something that your customer wants. And that reminds me of when we were looking for a car in 2015 before we got our Highlander. I knew what I wanted. I wanted a Highlander. And right. I wanted a used Highlander. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a Highlander. Right. And when we went in there, he's trying to upsell us to the brand new one that just has six miles he's like, but this one's better. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want a 2015 Highlander. I want a used Highlander that has the same features. It's okay. I don't want to spend an extra $10,000. Right. Um, but he kept trying to sell us on that. And then he tried to sell us on the, the Toyota Sienna 2015 and you have good it, memory. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so I'm like... I bet you're not going back to that guy again. <laughs> yeah. Well... Actually, we, I, I actually, actually like the guy. We, we I think we did go up, back to we, him. Yeah. No, we did oh, okay. end up buying the Highlander that I wanted from him. Right. But I'm sure he was disappointed. But that was turning should have said, me are you going to give it no, to me? No, I actually I ran would have asked him, him, are you going to give yeah. it to me at that I've price? run into him yeah. a couple times, right. actually, at the same gym. Okay. And uh, no, he was. Uh, matter of fact, he's waiting until we're ready to buy another vehicle. But yeah. I, but I, you know, but that turned me off, though. I have to say. Yeah, I, you know, I looked at his what he did as his experience. He was yeah, a, yeah, right. yeah, 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 he was he new to sales. To he had only right, been right, right, right. he had been selling cars for maybe three to three to six months. And so I remember what I was like as a new salesperson, very pushy, right. yeah, lacked yeah, yeah. confidence. But the point yeah. you're making, Deborah, is no one wants to be sold. Right. They right. love to buy. Yeah, everyone, right. everyone wants right. to buy. Nobody wants right. to be sold. They love to buy. Mm-hmm. And a good seller finds out what people want and exactly. gives it to them. And Correct. You don't, and you don't come across as desperate. Right. Correct. And you solve their issues. There's also a, a, a thing that we say, and you want to write this down, education sells. That's one of the ways you don't have to promote yourself. It's something as simple as us doing this little video here. I mean, we're not trying to sell you guys any services. We're hoping that we'll, it'll position us in your mind as experts that if and when you do think of marketing, you'll think of us. But if you don't, it's not a big deal. But the point I'm making here is that, you know, everybody have what we call a triggering event. You know, let's say, for example, I get on, on, on the radio and I'm like, hey, come down to Mission on Tires and you can get four tires for $100 and... That's an unbelievable deal. But if I don't need those tires, I don't care how much you sell them for. You could be selling them for a dollar. If I don't need them, I'm not going to buy them. Right. But if you educate someone and you begin to tell them, well, you know, uh, one of the ways you can preserve your tires is uh, maybe you let, make sure you put less air in it. I don't know. Right. Whatever. You, I'm making this stuff you, up. You provide benefit. But, yeah. words, but you, if your tire is bald and it looks like it doesn't have any treads on it, you need a new tire. No. In no, no. Words, what you I'm saying is die. You can die in a car accident. Right, right. But, you know, 10 reasons why you need to make sure you have a good tire. Right. But you're not selling anything. You're not saying anything about your business. All you're doing is telling people you're how to have a good education. tire. Right. You're educating them. Now, when they do have a flat tire, they're going to think of you first. Right. Everybody's going to have a triggering event. So, uh, so, perfect, Troy. So, we're going to take a break on radio. Those of you that are uh, on Facebook Live, this is a good t- chance if you want to, to, to post your questions and we'll seek to answer them. And what's unique about what we do is we answer them with scripture, right? The principles that we use from a place of industry and enterprise is related to the Bible. And the reason we use the Bible, we believe, especially when it comes to the people of God, that typically if something can't be established and confirmed with Scripture, we don't take action. And we don't want to just be hearers, but doers. After the break, what I'd like to do, guys, before we go into our third secret, I would like to talk a little bit about... Do you have time to do it? We'll try. We'll start it. We'll start it, yeah. We'll we'll get in the beginning of it. Yeah. I think what I would like to do is I want to address the subject of, of selling. A lot of God's people have not only aversions to selling, they have bought into the idea that I'm not a salesperson, I don't like selling, and uh, that sort of thing. And I want to address that in light of the experience that you and I had today at the doctor's office. So we're going to take a break, and we'll come back, 
in a moment. And uh, those of you that are on Facebook Live, well, there's no break for you. All right, shoot your questions yeah. and we'll answer them. Yep. Life can be difficult at times, and we may go through ups and downs or experience financial hardship. Maybe you had a loan modification, a short sale, or even filed for bankruptcy. Hey, everyone, this is Mike. And this is Brian of Fellowship Home Loans. You could be in a modified mortgage and not even realize that the rate is adjustable. Maybe it contains a balloon payment, or maybe you're not even paying any principal. A modification is a short-term fix. Call us today to get your mortgage evaluated and receive the truth about what you can qualify for. 800-804-SAVE. That's 800-804-7283. Or online at fellowshiphomeloans.com. All listeners receive two-month break in mortgage payments and $1,000 back at closing. Mortgage lending guided by Christian principles. Come and get your loan, Fellowship Home Loans. Intercontinental Capital Group, DBA, Fellowship Home Loans, Equal Housing Opportunity Lender, NMLS number 60134. All right, so welcome back to Live Recession Proof Now, where we teach God's people how to glorify Him through industry and enterprise. Or better said, we teach you how to change your life by changing your finances. Maybe you don't know this, but the Bible speaks more about money than any other subject in the Bible than God himself. There's more than 2,500 scriptures or verses or mentions of money, stewardship, finances, and this is a very important subject to God, so much so that it is one of the only things in scripture that actually the Bible says we can't serve God and mammon or money. Money is such an important thing in Scripture and to mankind that it actually can elevate itself to a, a place of deity where people worship it instead of worshiping the God of Scripture. And there's lots more examples uh, like that to reinforce uh, how important money is. God says where our treasures are. That's where our heart will be. And so, so this so. is an important issue. But before the break, we talked a little bit about the aversion. People are kind of close to people who are over salesy and pushy and so on. What are your thoughts on that? Because there are a lot of God's people who have bought into the idea, well, I'm not, I'm not into sales. I don't like sales. Uh, that's not for me. I think that's, again, coming from the idea of, um, you know, the selfish ambition or vain conceit, your own interest as opposed to the interest of the other person. Right. Like you said, a, you know, a good salesperson is not interested in selling you something, but helping you to buy right. that that's, thing that you're looking for, right? right? So that's the reason why people You need to like, say that again, what you just said. What About the good salesperson? Right. Right, well, a, a good helping, salesperson is helping you to buy, not but selling there was you a last something, phrase you, but you, helping you to buy. There's a last phrase you, you added there that I think most would miss. To buy they help you, you to buy what you're looking yeah. for. Correct. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. To help you to buy what you're looking for. I, Troy tells the story all the time about when we were looking for uh, some sol- techie solution for the house. And he goes into um, Best Buy, I think it was, right? right and he right, had right. some idea of what would solve the problem. We were having some um, Would connection you like me issues. to tell the story? Yeah, you could probably tell it better than no, I No, let it tell The whole point is, though... That the guy heard what you were saying, what tech problems we were having, and said, okay, you know, this idea that you have, that would be a good solution, but here's actually, this one would work better. Right. And we were like, wow. And it actually and ended it up... And it cost less. Exactly. It ended up costing less. More. Now, that's a good salesperson. He's not right. like, oh, sh- sure, buy that thing that costs more because, you know, it's better for the store and that's what you came in here wanting anyway. No, he was right. like, he, oh, that's the problem that you're having? No, don't get that thing. Get this thing. It would work a lot better. Here's what you need to solve your problem. And that's the principle of scripture, which I don't know if that guy was a Christian or even thinking of right. Philippians 2, 3, and 4, but right, right. he was doing what was right. Here's the solution to your problem. Right. And that's really what sales should be about. So we should be, I, I, don't, I don't see any see, reason my, why my, not to, my right, philosophy, if you're meeting people's needs. My philosophy and the way I think, and all, and all of you know, I've been in sales for more than 30 years, right? So I've sold everything from high-end watches sales to, from this country everything sold everything is sold yeah <laughs> and so um so to me this is so simple to me is it's it's if you if you really believe the key is belief if you really believe the customer will be better off for working with you because you're you have high value 
high integrity, right? Uh, you go the extra mile, which is a principle of Scripture. Right. You love your neighbor as yourself. Correct. You do unto others as you would have them do unto you. All these principles are wired into your DNA if you've been walking with God for a significant amount of time. Secondly, you believe that the product or the service you're providing is better than what the market is generally offering. And so, to me, it may, it's like the gospel, right? There are people who are, who are intimidated and afraid to share the gospel, right? Well, part of that flows from our lack of belief that the gospel, that the person will be better off for hearing and receiving and embracing the gospel. Now, we would believe it in our head, but in our hearts, we don't believe it. Why? The Bible says, true faith has action. What we believe, we will do. What we believe, we will, we will uh, demonstrate by our living. And so, for me, evangelism, to me, is just how sales work. Good selling is just like evangelism. He that wins souls is wise. Mm-hmm. Well, when you are, quote-unquote, selling, right... And it has all these negative connotations. It needs almost to be redefined in the mind of many people. You need wisdom. You need to be a good listener. You need to understand what people are looking for. Right. And as you said, Troy, education sells. Correct. Right? And you need to be able to offer to the person. I always think of selling like, like a doctor. You walk into the doctor's office. The doctor doesn't say, you say, hey, doctor, I'm having a pain in my knee. And the doctor say, okay, no problem. Here, take this, this, and this, and take these pills, and check me out in about six weeks. That's a bad doctor. Right. A good doctor is going to be inquisitive. Ask a lot of He's questions. He's going to ask questions. He's well, going to do a client's happen? needs analysis. Right. He or she is going to say, well, how long have you had the pain in your knee? Have you had the pain in any other area of your body? Have you fallen lately to cause the pain in your knee? Can you think of when the pain started, right? right. What is the doctor doing? Gathering information yeah. to solve the problem. And again, I'm only doing this because I've met many of God's people who are struggling financially in business because they've bought the idea that sales is bad. I hate selling. I don't like to sell. I'm an introvert. I'm not a salesperson. And I say, no, no, no. Because every last one of us, when we are passionate about something, we talk about it. Correct. You may be an introvert, but if you get passionate about homeschooling, you're going to talk to all the people you know about homeschooling, about the great curriculum. You may be an introvert, but if you go see Black Panther and you're excited about it, you're going to share it with all your friends. How do we know? Because you post it all online and you tell everybody you know. Right. Uh, These you limiting watch a, a beliefs, basketball game or the limiting beliefs, in my opinion, cook a good meal. cause many oh. of God's people to struggle unnecessarily. And we're praying and asking God to send us more business, send more people, uh, Lord, to buy our stuff. And God is saying, I've already given you what you need. You just have to move out of your fear and be courageous. Right? And and it's like you said, it's all a belief, right? Right. You also need to not only educate the customer, you need to educate yourself. You need to become more educated on what it is you're actually doing or trying to do so you can develop more confidence. Right. You know, Sean mentioned with the gospel thing. What I would say, I, I don't think the person thinks the gospel is ineffective. I think they, because, you know, God's word will never return void, uh, empty. I think the person who's delivering it either thinks that they're going to do a bad job in doing it, or they think, well, this person is not going to see a need for it. But if you understand how powerful the gospel is, it doesn't matter where someone is in their life. Um, if you're in prayer and believing God and doing it rightly, most likely it's going to have an impact on that individual, even if they don't respond right away. And the same thing happens in selling. If you do what you, you know, I, I, I would say, I, I like Adrian's term, I'm going to coin that if she don't mind, is look, helping people to buy effectively. You right. know, just because yeah. everybody wants to buy. Everyone wants to buy something. That's why when the new iPhone comes up or the new Galaxy comes out, you know, someone still wants to buy it. Why? What, what do they do? They spend the whole time telling you about all the different features and educating you on what the phone could do. So by the time you finish reading or watching a video or commercial or whatever it is, you're already ready to buy the phone and it hasn't even come out yet. Right. They educate you. So, they, you know, so yeah. people so are doing ba- this all the time. Back to, I just want to say the point I was making, Troy, about that, about being afraid or intimidated to share the gospel and how that is often rooted in a lack of belief that the person 
that will, the person will be better off for hearing and receiving. Let's take the woman uh, at the well, right? Uh, the woman at the well, her life is transformed by the words of Jesus. She doesn't know enough yet to expect. She is so excited by the change in her own life that she can't wait to share with everybody what, what Christ has done for her. And that's kind of how life works. What happens over time to many people who are in selling and doing um, marketing and so on, you can get to the point where you get so used to rejection, so used to people not being open, that you start to believe that it's not beneficial to them or right. they're closed. Or I'm going to wait until they're ready. But my point is, when you are new to something, you're newly exposed, you don't spend time thinking about whether someone is open to it. Back to our conversation with the young lady. Um, Self-promotion, I think, is also a cover for lack of confidence, to be honest. Okay, explain. Because you have to tell people, well, I'm, I'm good. I, I'm honest. I am, you right. want to... Good I, point. I, I agree. I'm, I understand you know, and, and So it really, can flow from insecurity. Yes, yourself, so. yes, okay. yes. And another thing is, I think that also is what turns people off from... The whole um, direct sales. Direct what sales. is that? Mm -hmm. um, oh, the network yeah, marketing. Network marketing. And multi-level marketing Because industry. all they do is, this is the greatest business since sliced bread. And this business pays you all this money and you can buy a... Uh, Jaguar, drive around in a Jaguar and live in a mansion. And this business is so great. Um... It just turns people off. And again, they, they never ask us. Not, suppose I don't want a Jaguar. Suppose I don't want to live in a mansion. Right. True, right. Suppose I'm true. content living in my house with, with, with five bedrooms, you know. That's the right. thing. A person doesn't. That's what I'm saying. They people don't take the time. That's what self Well, also does. people don't take the time to ask questions. It's the same thing in evangelism. The law was the best evangelist because he spent more time asking people questions. Well, the guy comes to him and say, hey, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Many of us would have just blurted out, hey, uh, walk down the aisle, pray this prayer, follow walk me. Walk down the aisle. What? You guys can you slow know? down. We have to walk go. down the aisle, pray <laughs> right. this prayer, and follow me. My point is, listen, why are you calling me good? There is none good. Now, of course, Jesus is good. He's the only one that was good. But this person didn't understand it, so Jesus took the time to help him understand what good really was. And took him through the commandments. Don't right. steal whatever, whatever. And you'll see that all through our Lord's life. As he spent most of his time in sharing the gospel with others by asking questions. And that is a, a very effective method in not only evangelizing, but helping people to buy. See, I changed my language. Helping people to buy or sell or whatever it is you're doing. Ask questions first. And you'll help the person to come to the conclusion themselves. themselves and they'll probably end up spending more money than... You even right. expected. Adrian, how are we doing with time? Yeah, well, it's actually time for us to wrap up for yeah. the radio. So again, you're listening to Live Recession Proof Now, where we equip God's people uh, to change their lives by changing their finances. You've been listening to Live Recession Proof Now with the Isaacs Marketing Group's management team, teaching Christians to glorify God through industry and enterprise. As 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, We wish that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Is your soul prospering today? For more information about how to live recession-proof now, visit liverecessionproofnow.com. Or if you have questions about the show or ideas for us, please write us at info at liverecessionproofnow.com. 